What are you doing to make sure your brain is getting the proper blood flow? Hi, I'm Bernice Hunt and I am a brain health specialist. I work with women just like you who are starting to notice a few memory challenges and I help you to stay sharp so that as you age, you can still travel, have fun with your grandkids, and experience new adventures without missing a beat. As a wellness coach for over 10 years, I've heard a lot of concerns about blood pressure. And rightly so, we all need to be concerned about blood pressure. But I haven't heard so much talk about blood flow. Now, you know that interrupted blood flow or damaged vessels, blood vessels can cause a whole lot of problems, stroke, heart attack, death. That's definitely not good. But many people don't really pay attention to poor blood flow or not enough brain blood flow. And that is a big mistake. Now, did you catch my video? Um, a few days ago on blood flow, I did one and it was talking about the foods that you can eat that will boost the blood flow to your brain. And that is very important, something that you definitely can do. But today I want to talk about number one, the signs of poor blood circulation in your brain and also other things you can do in addition to eating certain foods that will increase your blood flow. Now, got a question for you. How many miles of blood vessels are in your brain? And yes, I did say miles. How many miles of blood vessels are in your brain? Give up. 400. Over 400 miles. Can you believe that? I can't even hardly picture that. 400 miles of blood vessels, you know some are really, really tiny, in your brain. So it's really important that, that those blood vessels are getting adequate blood flow because guess what? Your brain cannot store the oxygen and the nutrients that are in the blood. That's what the blood is doing. It's bringing oxygen and nutrients to your brain so that the brain can do the things it needs to do, all the activities that it needs to do, requires nutrients, requires oxygen, and so your vessels are bringing that blood in there. And since you can't store it like you can in other cells, you can store other cells, can store things, you can't store it in your brain. So there has to be a constant, non-stop supply of blood going through your brain getting to the places it needs to get in the right amount and at the right time. So it's very, very important that you're giving your brain enough, um, the blood is flowing adequately in your brain. Really important. Do you know that our brain needs 20% of the oxygen that we're intaking all the time. 20% of it is being used by our brain and it's being carried through our blood vessels and so you need to have that flowing in there. So it's very, very important. And like I said, it has to be continuous and it has to be regular, no interruptions. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about your brain. When the blood flow is not adequate, things happen. Just like when we talked about um, water. If you decrease your water intake that's coming into your brain just by 2%, you have some negative things happen. Same thing with your oxygen and your nutrients that are in, the, in your blood. Same thing. Things happen and they're not good. Okay, so we have things like mental issues. You're talking about being moody. You're talking about depression. You also have things going on with mental fatigue like you're having brain fog, you're having memory loss, you're having um, lack of focus, poor concentration, trouble thinking clearly. Yeah, that's a, that can be signs of poor circulation through your brain. Dizziness, double vision, headaches. Those are signs of poor circulation. And then there's also things that are going on with your, your, your feet and your hands. 
that are showing you that the circulation is not good in your body. So for example, if you have cold hands, cold nose, cold feet, cold toes, that's a sign that you're having poor circulation in your body. If you have to wear socks at night, I remember I used to wear socks at night all the time. Didn't know that it was a sign of poor circulation. I just thought, you know, my feet were cold, so I put socks on. But that's a warning that there's something going on in your body that is not good. If you have cramping in your hands or in your feet, that's a sign of poor circulation. And they say the rule of thumb is if you're having poor circulation in your hands or your feet, your toes, you can bet your bottom dollar that you're having poor circulation of the blood flow in your brain as well. Yeah, so we need to look at that as not being normal. We kind of pass it off and just say, you know, it's just par for the course, you know, it's just, you know, things that happen, you know, brain fog, brain fart, whatever, and we just kind of shrug it off. No, it's a warning sign that you need, something needs to be addressed because it's not normal. It's common and that a lot of people experience it, but it's not supposed to be happening. It is not normal. Okay, also there's other things like unhealthy nails. If you have fungus or nail problems or if you're discoloration in your nails and things, that could be a sign of poor circulation as well. And if you're the type of person that you can't get moving in the morning until you've had your cup of coffee or you have to go out and do exercise to like jump start your, your, yourself into your day, that can also be a sign of poor circulation. So you need to look at those things that are happening and you need to address some of those symptoms as best you can. So we talked about in the last video, like I said, we talked about foods. because There's certain foods that you can eat on a regular basis and that is a wonderful plan to have. You know, eat those beets, that garlic, you know, those leafy greens, those berries, those things. Take a look at the video that I did a few days back and it'll talk about the foods that you can eat that will boost your blood flow in your brain, but there are also other things you can do. So, number one, numero uno, exercise. Get that exercise going, exercise, yeah. They say the exercise is great for your brain in, in a lot of different ways, but they say exercise is the single most important factor you can do for your brain, and it does increase your blood flow. So get out there and exercise. Now you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to run a marathon and you know jump over you know hoops and all that kind of stuff. You the important thing is that you do something that you like to do, that you can continue doing. So that you do it regularly. You have regular exercise. You know in the blue zones, those areas where there's people that um, live you know to be you know over 100 years old and stuff. One of the um, secrets that they have is movement. And they may not be, you know, uh, a member of a gym or anything, but they do movement in their daily activities, in their household chores, in their uh, things they do outside, like gardening, or, the, or instead of getting on that, you know, that Green Acres motorized lawnmower, Green Acres is a place to be, you know. No, they do the old-fashioned way and they mow that lawn, exercising in the house instead of using all those electrical appliances and convenience things they get out and they utilize their muscles they're doing movement and exercise every day and in terms of that that is increasing their blood flow that's a good thing to do another thing that you can do and you're gonna like this is music music get it going get it going music music increases your blood flow so that's a fun thing to do not have anything music that you like if you don't like that hard rock, rock stuff, or if you don't like people cursing every other word in the music, don't listen to that. That's just going to irritate you and stress you out. That is not going to increase your blood flow the way you want it to be. You find something that you like to listen to and listen to that. You can listen to it or you can actually play an instrument or even take lessons. Any kind of way you're utilizing the music in something you like will improve your blood flow. So that's kind of fun. And the other thing I wanted to mention is meditation. Yep. The Bible knew what it's talking about. It knows what it's talking about, meditation. And now science is backing what the Bible has been telling us to do all the time. You know, meditate day and night, make your way prosperous and have this success. I know they're talking about the word, which I highly recommend you do meditate in the word. But whatever you choose to meditate in, the research says that it will improve, increase your blood flow. So make sure you make that a regular practice in your day. Meditation is 
good for your brain. So those are the good things that you can do. Do the food and um, food boosting, food um, blood boosting foods, and you can do the exercise. You can do the music, and you can do the meditation. Now, what should you not do? Mm -hmm. There's some things that you don't need to be doing, especially if you want your blood flow to be circulating in your brain properly. One thing you don't want to be doing is smoking. No smoking, not moderation. No smoking, because mo smoking not only can constricts your blood vessel, but it also decreases the amount of oxygen that your blood, that your brain is able to receive. So you do not want to do any kind of smoking. That is, mm -mm. okay, another thing you don't want to do is be a couch potato. Mm-hmm, sedentary lifestyle, not doing nothing but kicking back, doing nothing. You know what they say? They say that's sitting is the new smoking. So sitting around doing nothing is just about as bad as smoking when it comes to your brain and your blood flow. And you don't want to be sitting around. And that includes sitting in front of a computer. In fact, hunched up and over a computer, they say, actually constricts your blood flow to your brain. So that is also included when we're saying sitting around too much. How about even if you're sitting in front of a computer, call yourself working, but you're sitting and you're hunched over? That's not helping your brain, and that has, that's not helping the blood, proper blood flow to your brain. So you don't want to be doing that as well. Also, you need to watch the caffeine and the alcohol that you're ingesting. Mm -hmm. You need to watch that. It's not, that's not good for your blood flow either. So those are some things that you do not want to do. And you, we talked about the things that you do want to do. So you have things that you should be doing and things that you really don't want to do if you want to keep your brain circulating and able to function as it should. Cool. Now, guess what? Next week, my Better Brain Master classes are starting up again. You can go to my website, keepyourbrainsharp.com, and you can register for the time that suits you best. Guys, get in there, and we're going to talk about what every brain needs. We have five keys to brain health, what your brain needs, and you get to see how you're doing with all of that and why you should be doing what we're talking about you doing. So it's going to be wonderful. It's not too late to sign up. So go ahead and see what time suits you best. Keepyourbrainsharp.com is where you go. Scroll down and you'll see the little uh, box to click on for the registration schedule. Okay, because you know, and if you know anyone that is interested in their brain health and want to take advantage of this free class that you can take next week, go ahead and give them the information so they can sign up as well. Be happy to see them there as well because you know what? Your brain's destiny is in your hands.